So over on our three steps for healthier nails video, I got a great request for a video on gut inflammation. So if you're dealing with some type of inflammatory issue in your gut, in this video, I'm gonna help you understand the most common causes that can create these issues. I'm gonna talk about some of the supplements that people use and why they may or may not be helpful. And we'll talk about some steps that you can take to really turn your situation around. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So when you start looking up gut inflammation, you see a lot of information about, oh, it's an unhealthy lifestyle and it's genetics and sorry about your luck. These are just the cards that you were dealt. And when you start talking about lifestyle, a lot of people don't even really know what that means. But some big factors there when it comes to inflammation would be stress and what you're actually shoving down your gullet. What are you eating and drinking? Those things actually count. And if that's new information for you, you're gonna have to dig into that a lot because that really matters, especially if you're dealing with inflammatory issues in the gut. But you also see a lot about IBS and like inflammatory bowel disease and it's right there in the name, inflammatory bowel disease. But these issues are still really about inflammation in this digestive tract. You see a lot about things like SIBO and leaky gut. So when we wanna look at what's really, oh, shut up phone, I'm talking about gut inflammation. But inflammation is really about an immune response. That's just your body's immune system coming and cleaning up an issue, healing something, or taking care of a problem. So when we're looking at the response, we wanna see, well, what are the options of things that can create the need for that response. So some of the things that we can look at are like sensitivities to specific foods. And especially when we're looking at leaky gut, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on understanding leaky gut. So you can dig into that a little bit deeper if you think that's a problem. But basically there's these junctions in the lining of the intestinal tract and when they get too separated and they're not really tight together like they should be, then more things get through than really should get through. And then the immune system has a reaction to that. So a lot of times the inflammation can just be a sensitivity to a specific food due to these problems with a leaky gut issue. And the immune system is just responding to what it's viewing as an invader. We also see that a lot of these irritations can come from malfunctions in the digestive tract. So if you took battery acid and you just poured it on your arm, it's not gonna eat a hole through your arm. You're not gonna look through this hole in your arm just because you put some battery acid on there, but it really could irritate it. You could have a chemical burn. It could really burn you bad, or it could just be an irritation. Maybe it shows up an hour later. Maybe it shows up immediately. But if you did that over and over again every day, you're really gonna have some inflammation. So let's look at how that can happen in the digestive tract. Because when we eat food, the stomach here is meant to make hydrochloric acid or HCL. And this is very acidic stuff. It helps us break that food down so we can get all the nutrients out of that food. And once that food is acidified in the stomach where the stomach is made to hold those acids, that food will leave the stomach and come down here into the duodenum. Now that acidic product hitting that duodenum triggers this gallbladder here to squirt alkaline bile down to help neutralize those acids. So that's what the gallbladder does. It sends that bile down and then the pancreas will also squirt some bicarb out there. That helps neutralize acids a little bit too. It'll squirt some enzymes out there to help us break down some stuff. But for a wide variety of reasons, some people's bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow correctly. And then it doesn't come down to help neutralize the acids that left the stomach. And then those acids are going to move through the intestinal tract without being neutralized. Well, the stomach is made to hold those acids, remember, but the intestinal tract is not. And those acids are made to break down proteins. Well, that's what your intestinal tract is made of. So those acids moving through are going to irritate that intestinal lining and can create inflammation, especially over time. So if someone's bile is not working correctly, that's a simple malfunction that can create all kinds of inflammation further down the line. And the opposite of this can also be true. The same way that an acidic product can irritate this intestinal lining, 
Something that's overly alkaline can also irritate that lining. It's very common for someone not to be making enough stomach acid, and then they don't acidify that food correctly. They're not really breaking down their food and getting all the nutrients out of that food. But the worst part of all that is if this bile is coming down and trying to neutralize things that aren't really acidic, then this stool moving through the intestinal tract is going to be very alkaline. And that has the ability to irritate that lining similar to how an acidic product could. And that could create inflammation. To make things worse, this stomach acid is not just there to help us acidify our food, it's also the barrier to the whole body. So when bacteria and other varmints come in on the food that we're eating, they're supposed to die in an acid bath. But if someone isn't making enough stomach acid, they come in like, oh, this is nice, let's set up camp here. And then they thrive here in the stomach, and then they move down here into this small intestine, and they set up camp there where they should not be. We should have our beneficial bacteria here in our large intestine. We shouldn't have very much in the small intestine. And that's how we create those small intestinal bacterial overgrowth issues, or the SIBO, like all the cool kids have. So if we have some type of overgrowth there, well then the body's going to say, oh, I have an immune system, I can send that there to take care of this. But when it's constantly coming in and the body can't really take care of all that, over time that's going to create inflammation just from that immune response to an invader that we were talking about. So we talked about the possibility of a food sensitivity looking like an invader to the body and the body attacking that. But the body can also be attacking actual invaders. And if that's the case, that also has the ability to create inflammation. So you can see that just some simple digestive malfunctions that are very common have the ability to create a variety of irritants that could lead to inflammation. So if you're dealing with any digestive symptoms like burping or bloating or acid reflux or constipation or diarrhea or nausea or, or even maybe you just feel like food just kind of sits there like a rock in your stomach for six hours or maybe you're dealing with skin or acne issues. All of these are all signs that digestion is not working correctly. So if you want to dig into that a little bit, my book Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapters 3 and 4 kind of walk you through figuring out which aspects of digestion might not be working correctly and steps you can take to improve that. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free. And some other things we need to think about are possible environmental irritants that could be coming down into the body and creating inflammation that way. Things like heavy metals or pesticides and things that we're all exposed to today that we weren't exposed to as much back in the cool kid days. But what's important to understand is you can see that the cause for this inflammation is not going to be the same for every person. It's really going to vary greatly from person to person. And there's a lot of people that might be dealing with a combination of the things that we talk to. So when we look at the most common tools that people use to deal with this gut inflammation, they're using things like zinc L-carnosine. And actually, this can be very effective at helping to wipe out bacteria like in the stomach, like H. pylori or something like that. That seems to be effective at that. So if that's the cause of your inflammation, then all of a sudden that can be helpful. But if your inflammation is coming because this stomach acid isn't being neutralized, is zinc carnosine really going to do much for you? It's not going to do much for you if that acid continues to irritate that lining because it's not getting neutralized. Other common things that people use are, are turmeric, and turmeric contains a natural polyphenol called curcumin, and that seems to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, and so that may be why that's beneficial for some people. A lot of people will use vitamin D, and vitamin D is very important for our immune system to function correctly. We need vitamin D to help us pull calcium out of our food into the bloodstream and so that the body can use that and help the immune system function. But too much vitamin D can actually restrict the immune system from functioning. So a lot of people take these pounds and pounds of vitamin D and then their inflammatory situation goes away and they're like, oh man, vitamin D fixed it. Well, did it fix it or did it just turn off the ability for your immune system to have that response? So we'll put a link in the description below for who should not be using so much vitamin D if you want to dig into that a little bit more. People also use glutamine. That's very popular for inflammation, especially in the gut and the digestive tract. And glutamine is just an amino acid, and the body uses amino acids as building blocks when it's trying to repair tissues. So that could be one benefit that glutamine has. And also, glutamine is what we call pro-anabolic, 
where it pushes the body into this natural anabolic nighttime state where the body is supposed to rebuild and renew itself. So if glutamine is pushing the body further into that state, that may improve its ability to repair and rebuild things. But if we have something that's causing constant inflammation, is glutamine really gonna do much good there? I don't feel like it is. And there's also a lot of people that should not use glutamine. And we'll put a link in the description below for our video on who should not be supplementing with glutamine if you wanna understand that a little bit better. So instead of using you know, these inflammatory remedy type things, we really like to see people look at what's going on and try to understand how to correct the actual underlying cause of the inflammation for them. So you can start digging into trying to figure out, oh, is this stomach acid not being neutralized? Is my bile not flowing correctly? Or maybe am I not making stomach acid and the front door is open for all these bad guys to come in and set up camp and create all these problems down here. It's about investigating what's going on with your body and then you can take the right steps to improve those issues for you. So chapters three and four of my book that you can get for free can help walk you through that. If you don't like to read much, we also have a totally free digestion course that'll walk you through those same steps and that course is free and we'll put the link to that course in the description below as well. But right now, if you wanna dig further into figuring out is your body making enough stomach acid or not, jump over and check out our video for 10 signs of low stomach acid so you can gain more insights to see if that might be a problem. I can't wait to hear about your results.